Okay, uh, there are going to be two other things I'm going to do here. Related things. First thing, you might ask me, well look, I don't want to compare the breakfast, um, how likely someone is going to go for the breakfast bar relative to the cereal bar. I want to kind of compare a breakfast bar, so oatmeal, how likely is someone going to go for the breakfast bar compared to the oatmeal? Well, mm, the simplest way to do this, uh, well, involving no calculation, is to rerun it but set the reference category for oatmeal. Say I want to compare now oatmeal, I mean breakfast bar to oatmeal. So I don't want the thing left out as cereal. We can tell SPSS that by going by rerunning it. So analyze regression, multinomial logistic. Okay, look notice here look we've got reference category we can choose we can choose which one it is. So at the moment it's set by default to last category. We want custom. And what we want to do is we want to set oats meal to the reference. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we've got to get code for it. So let's go back to the data and just toggle. Right, so oatmeal, there's oatmeal in the third line. All right, let's just see what number that comes up when I press this button. Two, okay, oatmeal is coded two. So we go, it doesn't matter which window we do it in. We go analyze regression multinomial logistic. This time I'm going to click on the reference category and we're going to click custom and we want two because we want oatmeal to set this reference. Now before I press OK you're just going to kind of guess what's going to happen to the boxes here. Well, are we going to retain breakfast bar? Yes. Are we going to retain oatmeal? No. Instead that oatmeal should be replaced by cereal. Let's just see that happen. Yep, there you go. Breakfast bar and cereal. So if I want to compare breakfast bar now to oatmeal, look for our agenda, that's a negative number so that tells us that a male compared to a female is less likely to go for the breakfast bar than the oatmeal. I emphasize again in this video I'm just looking just at the coefficients here. I am not focusing on any of the test statistics. I'm not looking at significance. I'm not looking to see if the model is any good. I'm just assuming that this model is is the best fit. Okay, now um, I just want to say that this odds here, 0 0.81, 0 0.819 I could have got the same result from the first regression, um, so I didn't have to run a second regression. Uh, I could have just got it from the first regression, um, but then you have to do a bit of math. You have to write some numbers down, um, and uh, I think that's not where we need to be. So you know, we just want to kind of get the values out, but just know that if, say, you're in an exam, you're given this, you want to compare cereal bar over breakfast bar to cereal bar you want to calculate the odds, you can actually do that. You don't need to rerun this thing. All right. Okay. Um, that's the first thing. That's the first extension. The second one is, let me put this question to you. Um, this result that I've got to get the odds ratio, uh, did I have to kind of run a multinomial logistic regression? Could I have got the same result just running cross tabs because if you think about it I've got two categorical variables you know choice of breakfast choice of breakfast which has got you know three things three groups cereal breakfast bar oatmeal and then I've got gender so isn't this the same as doing a test of association because once you've got the test of association you've got the table you can calculate the odds ratio that way as well can't you uh -huh. The answer is yes. So why don't we do that now just to show you that I can get the same 
result. Um, what I want to show you is what do I want to show you? I want to show you that I can say get the same odds ratio that we calculated here for males or females for the going for the breakfast bar and the cereal using cross tabs. Okay. Let's do that. I'm going to run cross tabs now. So that's analyze descriptives cross tabs. Oh, by the way, before I run it, I want to say to you, it doesn't mean that you can just, uh, if you want to do multinomial, that you can just do cross tabs, and I'll tell you why once I've done this. So you see why that multinomial is in, is needed. Um, you can't just do cross tabs instead of multinomial whenever you need to do multinomial. Okay, okay. I just want to get these numbers. All right, because I probably you can't see it that well because one thing I don't like about SPSS this table here you can't really enlarge it easily and still make it look nice uh, let me just write down the figures here but I want to keep bear in mind this 0.864 so let me just while I copy the numbers out you just kind of think about what we're doing here so I've got the cross tabs table it gives me male and female and um, I've got a choice of um, breakfast bar so type of bar got oats and I've got cereal and then I've got the numbers coming in so let's have a look 104 there 127 155 155 uh, 165 and uh, 174 and then let's calculate the totals okay total number of ma males add those three figures up 424 Add those numbers up. Uh, four, five, six. Right, this is the cross tab. It's, um, this is the cross tabs table. So it's saying 104. There were 104 men who took breakfast bar. Okay, and say here 155 ladies took oatmeal. I'm going to calculate the odds um, for breakfast bar over cereal bar okay for men remember the formula so how it works is like this oh, let's see um, notation wise let's make let's change color let's go odds M for men all right now that is equal to the probability that they go for the breakfast bar say breakfast bar divided by probability here that they go for cereal so we've got to calculate probability that goes for the breakfast bar 104 out of 424 go for that so 104 divided by 424, that's the top line. For cereal, what proportion of them? Well, 165 out of 424, so 165 divided by 424. And recall that using fractions, the rule of fractions here, that divide is the same as turning it upside down, so you've got 424 for 165. That cancels with that. So you've got 104 divided by 165, and that's for odds for men. Going for breakfast bar over cereals. Do the same for females. So P breakfast bar over PC. Okay, ladies, breakfast bar 127 over 456. And cereal 174 over four five six again just using little fractions turn the second one the divide thing being divided upside down so we've got one two seven over one seven four let's say that M F now Let's go over here. 
the odds ratio here for men compared to ladies is going to be that M divided by that F. So it's 104 divided by 165 uh, divided by this thing here, which is same as turning upside down two times. 127. Okay, now um, put that into your calculator. Okay, I've just done up my calculator. I get the number 0.86. Okay, let's just go here. That's that's enough. Okay, that's the odds ratio. 0.8636. Let's go back up here. Oh look, 0.86. Well, four. It's three decimal places. So the cross tabs is giving you the same result as using the running the multinomial regression. Wow. Huh. So does that mean that we, whenever we need multinomial uh, logistic, that we can just run across tabs instead? Answer is no, no. Um, here it's fine, and the reason is because in this model, in this example, you see my explanatory variables are categorical. Remember, the cross tabs is a tool that can be used when my variables are categorical. So here I've got two categorical variables. The y is categorical, my choice for breakfast, uh, breakfast, and so is my explanatory variable. But the multinomial can also, we can have, in, in the x's, we can have continuous things. Um, for instance, here, They've grouped the data age category, but if they had the raw, if they had the actual age of the person, so this is continuous, then we could have put that in our model as well as an explanatory variable, as a predictor. Whereas you know that if this is continuous, you can't put that, in, you know, cross tabs couldn't ha handle that. So, to recap, a multinomial logit model, logistic model, uh, is when your response variable contains. Uh, more than two categories. In fact, if it's two categories, it would just collapse down. It would be just the same as the bi binary uh, logit model. So it's only differs from the logit model if it, you have if the response variable has more than two outcome outcomes. Okay, and and if we think of them as choices, uh, individual going for one of those choices. Uh, those choices could depend on a set of explanatory variables, and those explanatory variables could be categorical, they could be continuous, or they could be a mix of them. And with this model, we can talk about, you, through the coefficients, we can talk about how the x's are related to the uh, choices. We could actually also use the model to obtain probabilities of here an individual going for a certain choice. So when are you going to likely to kind of encounter such um, um, possibility of using such a model is like when you've got the survey data from a questionnaire and something that you're interested in is categorical with more than two outcomes and those outcomes that they are, that variable is nominal. It's on a nominal scale, so order doesn't matter. If the order does matter, then you would run um, an ordinal, logistic, ordinal uh, regression, logistic regression. Okay, so um, you can have a go of your own data set or uh, this data set, which is an SPSS. It's called uh, serial.sav. Okay, good luck.